So what is going on guys, this is Ryan here, and let's just get straight into this video, dude. There's so much that I want to talk about, so much that's been happening, and I gotta give my two cents on it, because one, people want to hear it, and number two, I just want to talk. First things first, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet and talk more about this towards the second half of the video, but guys... I'm taking a break. Well, well, kind of anyway. So I think I posted a video around about a month ago where I talked about motivation dwindling and me really having to make some small changes to the channel, which I've actually been doing slowly but surely. And these small things are actually starting to add up to a bigger picture and it does Perfect. make me really happy. I feel like I've refined my editing to a point where I'm starting to get very happy with the way it looks and also the amount of time that it's taking me. And it seems like you guys are enjoying it too, which again is just a motivator on top. However, that said, I'm actually forcing myself to take a break from YouTube completely for two weeks. As I said kind of before, let me explain. I've been working tirelessly to try and prep content for my channel whilst I'm still away and I've been actively making small changes to the editing so that I can better prepare all of this content and still I'm struggling a little bit here and there which is fine though because that means I'm just simply exploring and starting to learn the limits of myself but I think what I want to just quickly break through and say is probably from this point on up until around about December the 7th you will still be seeing me upload content on this channel there may be one or two extra days missed here and there there may also be videos sliced between the regular style of editing that just have less just because simply I am one person trying to edit within a week enough content to cover two weeks of me being away from this channel and based on how I do things I've accepted that I just can't do that. I'm sure most of you guys do understand that because there is a lot of games that are out at the moment and there's many games that I still want to cover and I want to get the chance to without missing them so this is kind of the active solution. It's going to be very strange though because this is going to be the first time where I've actually taken a two week break from anything in my whole entire life. That's 25 years and I've never done this. I'm kind of almost scared to see what's going to happen with the channel whilst I'm away. I'm I'm sure things will run completely normal and in the grand scheme two weeks isn't even that long of a time but when you're so focused on something that you're incredibly passionate about despite the amount of stress it gives you being away from that I'm gonna call it my baby okay it's kind of stressful because I'm literally just uploading content on the channel and I've got to let the channel run itself for two weeks straight without me being able to potentially intervene we'll talk more about this though towards the end for now though guys we're gonna get into the nitty-gritty of this and really what the title is all about which is some brand new rules being brought in by and a lot wanted me to talk about this. Uh, I guess just offer my opinions on this, and I guess we're gonna go from there. Yo, switch that song up, put some jazz music on. Okay, that's better. Look, no negativity. We're just gonna chill, we're gonna chat, let's go. <sighs> Just when we thought Article 13, then Name 15, then Name 17, I think, was the worst of it. The FTC now throws something in relation to videos that we've got to be aware of, which is making sure that our content is either made for kids or not made for kids. And alone, that statement is kind of confusing because I, myself, I know that I make content for teens. People always say that I'm very family friendly, but I'm not. The only thing I don't do is cuss. I do the same stuff that everyone else does, so that's the only thing I disclude from my content. I mean, dude, if I'm playing Outlast 2, I'm going to leave in some of the weird executional bullcrap and disturbing imagery because that's part of the game and I don't really care like I'm just playing the game and I'm pretty sure if someone clicks on the video they know what they're getting into but now of course we get some brand new rules thrown at us which are going to be very confusing and to be honest let me just preface this this might not even be that much of a problem and again I'm going to explain why that is but it's just confusing guidelines thrown out again it's very very like perplexing a lot of people are talking about privating a lot of their old videos and honestly went through a phase where I wasn't sure if maybe I would have to do the same thing and maybe I still do like if this does turn out to be as bad as people think it is, it could be kind of catastrophic and I might actually have to private a lot of my content and change things a lot in the future. Now is a point where I'm also going to say in the top of the description that there is a link where you can share your thoughts, read upon this yourself because it's very important that you do so even as a viewer of content because it does shape potentially the future of what maybe you can see, what your friends can see or really what's going to happen to some of your favorite content creators. So what we're going to do is bring up a screen right here which says determining if your content is made for kids. Let's read through this and let's try and make some understanding of it. Regardless Regardless of your location, we will require that you tell us whether or not your videos are made for kids. We are making these changes according to the agreement with the US Federal Trade Commission. Failure to set your content appropriately may result in consequences on YouTube or have legal consequences under copper and other laws. This is based on like literally making videos on games. We have provided some guidance on what is considered made for kids below, but we cannot provide legal advice. If you are unsure whether your videos meet the standard, we suggest you seek legal counsel. Bro, I might have to seek legal counsel over playing FNAF VR. <laughs> and look, this is where things already become like stupid, okay? Because we see that this law is saying that if you're making content for kids, you're gonna have to try and figure something out. 
Bro, I make content for teens and above, and it's quite clear in the way I talk and stuff like that, but what about if a kid watches my content? How is that my problem for one second? I, I don't control that. And if I know I'm consciously making videos for teens and above, I'm gonna say that, nope. no, my video is not for kids. What about if a kid still sees it, you know? How, how is that legit my problem for one single second right there? Listen, guys, I kind of understand the basis of why this thing is even being implemented, and I think maybe what they were trying to target, and potentially what they're actually going for with this is, let's say, uh, Baby Shark, uh, we've got those ABC songs and, like, nursery rhymes where people throw up these animations that are, like, an hour long, and they're definitely designed for kids. It's a different era of YouTube entirely, and you've got to search to get there. Now, these channels must have found a gold mine for that sort of content, and really promoting that for kids who are very young. I suppose this is where this law would make sense for that to intervene, because these are videos that are specifically targeting children and very, very young people. Therefore, it makes sense why ads wouldn't be played on this. YouTube Kids, no doubt, promotes most of this stuff, so it, it kind of feels like that this law should be applied more over there, because to have a YouTube account in the first place, you have to be 13, if I'm correct. Oh, yeah, okay, so we searched this up here. It, you've got to be 13. It is the legal age. What about if a kid lies about his age, though? How is that, again, my problem? What about if someone puts their age as 21 and then proceeds to watch my content? <laughs> Here's something I went ahead and looked at, because of course we have no choice but to do this. My demographics my channel is, I think about 93% of people are over the age of 13. That there alone proves that I'm appealing content to teenagers. Therefore, I should be able to safely mark my content as not for kids, because that is what I'm doing, and what I know I'm trying to bring in as an audience. So now, let's actually give some examples, but let's also read over, apparently, when deciding whether or not your channel video is made for kids. Subject matter of the video, e.g. educational content for preschoolers. Now, this taps exactly into what I was saying. Let's say, I don't know, you got a video. One times two is two. Again, I get that. Why would ads need to be played on that when preschoolers are watching content? Next one, whether children are your intended or actual audience of the video. Bro, what is this second part? How do I control who watches my content? <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> By the way, something they don't mention here is that there is a potential fine. If I accidentally declassify one of my videos as not made for kids, kids watch it and then they deem that as the case, you could be fined, okay, for one single video, I'm talking one video, up to 42 thousand dollars. Let's say I'm feeling good for a month, okay? I make 25 videos. 42,000 times 25. 42,000 times 25 is 1 million 50,000. What? I could face a fine of up to 1 million 50 that for one week. It's no wonder people are so stressed about this, dude. If I got fined even for one video, that would impact a lot of my channel and a lot for me. It would change my life completely. All right, we're going to get back to this list. It's easy to get distracted from this. So whether the video includes child actors or models, I, again, I get that one. Whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand, what does that mean? I, I'm speaking English. Do, I'm sure children understand some of the words I'm saying. Let's talk about something, okay? I replace sayings like, what the f with what the freak? And I do that simply because, and this is my philosophy on this thought as well. If someone might be watching this video at school and maybe they've got it playing out of their phone or on public transport or something, you don't want someone who's like sat behind them uh, just like to hear cussing words constantly coming out of a phone. That's literally the only reason why I mainly don't cuss. And because, okay, if you cuss, you get limited ads. So where does this boundary lie anymore? What is, what, what do we do? The next question, whether the video includes activities that appeal to children, such as play acting, simple songs, or games, or early education. Simple songs, again, they could be implying the whole ABC thing for that, which again, that makes perfect sense. Uh, play acting, that as well taps exactly into something which was a problem about two years ago. There was this phase where there were grown-ups, and I'm sure some of you guys even remember this. They would dress up in like Spider-Man and like Frozen Elsa costumes. They would like go in weird places and they would start play acting these scenarios with weird music and sound effects behind it. Again, targeted for children, we know that. Let's see, the next one here, whether the video includes songs, stories, or poems for children. Again, I understand that one. That's targeting the right area. Any other information you may have to help determine your aud video's audience, like empirical evidence of the video's audience. This is actually a good thing, this last one here because that means that if something is classified as for kids, you could show them your demographics where it shows that the watchers are of a certain age and therefore they understand that maybe it was just caught in the crossfire. Now the problem is not the law that's coming in place because
Because again, I said before, I completely understand why this is even a necessary requirement in the first place. There's a lot of exploitation that does go on YouTube and many other platforms. Now the issue is that creators will get caught in the crossfire of this. And whilst there might not be any fines, there's gonna be a lot of annoying stuff that's gonna be happening. And we've seen it happen with some people already. There was a Pokemon YouTube who makes like these Pokemon animated stories and it was like tr completely informal. The problem is this was then branded as for kids. And it's like, no, bro, God, what the heck? Wait. That is where the main concern comes in for me also, because there is content that I do on my channel, which maybe does include one of these things, but I present it in such a way where it's definitely not for children. As well, there's like cross references. And there's something really interesting that I was thinking about. They are beginning to impede things like animations that are tailored toward kids. So anything that's maybe bright, maybe colorful. When I first started out YouTube, I used to play a lot of Happy Wheels. And my, I can't believe I'm bringing this up because this, listen, all I'm going to say is if you go back and watch that, everyone has to start somewhere. Everyone has to learn their personality and become more comfortable on camera with who they are and not who they want to present this crazy persona. That game is full of completely vibrant, colorful characters, funny sound effects, and then gore and blood and absolutely everything in between. This is something that was really interesting and got me thinking. YouTube went through this phase when they first introduced the whole limited ad system and a lot of content creators playing Happy Wheel had their videos limited and they were confirmed by manual review. And that is basically saying that the content is too gory. Yet we have this new rule coming in place where would that content technically be for kids because it's so colorful, it's so bright. To get limited ads, the content has to be pretty bad as in kids can't see this. We shouldn't be playing ads on this, you know? But then it's, it's like, it applies also for these brand new rules coming in. What is right? what is wrong. It now does feel like really we had limited ads popping in here and now they encourage us to be child friendly friendly for advertisers. Now this law comes in and there's this space between here which is not being spoken of. It's completely shrouded in a fog. We don't know what particularly is this fine line. I mean for all we know everyone is okay and honestly that's what I'm trying to believe at this moment. Which goes back to the problem of vagueness every time new laws get brought in and no one understands what is a boundary where is like a step lies you know. We don't know how how impacting this is going to be. They mentioned video games being a problem tailored toward kids. What does that mean? It's Baldi's Basics going to get caught in this crossfire. It's an edutainment based horror game. It's got some scary, horrific things attached to it. Does that count as child friendly? Is that game made for kids? In my opinion, absolutely not. This is a game made for people who during that time era know of this type of game, but it's been brought back re-envisioned in a brand new light. But do people understand that? Superliminal, a very recent game I played and something I'm going to get back into and I'm probably going to play through the whole of that because I've been really enjoying that experience. There is no gore in that. It's not exactly a game built for children, but it's bright. It's vibrant. It features fun things. Is that bad? How about tabs? How about this game, I Am Fish? Because it's just quirky and stupid. Untitled Goose Game. I'm definitely Minecraft is going to be very, very weird and vague within this thing. And it's part of the reason why, unfortunately, I've been wanting to bring it back for a while, but I don't know if I can. There's a risk. And I've, I remember when Article 13 came in and some people were literally just saying, just keep making content. It, you can't do that. It, it doesn't work like that. It would be nice if I could simply just think, yes, this is a problem that I'm not going to think about. But if someone comes knocking my door and says, yeah, you got a 42 grand thing, I'm probably going to be thrown back. I'm probably going to be sitting there thinking, I don't think I can do this as a job anymore. The annual earnings for minimum wage in the United States is $15,080, apparently according to a website I've just looked at right here. That is three years of consecutive work nearly if just one singular video unfortunately meets the requirements of this new law and i myself i have over 1000 videos which is i think like a 42 million dollar fine if say everyone was bad i already know like 99 percent of my stuff is absolutely fine but what about that one percent what about if i don't understand this law and i accidentally mark something as not for kids when they think it is these are the gray areas that are consistently popping up and these are the things which are creating the potential issues for creators and this is what's making people think a lot but after reading through this again, I understand why people are saying to creators that they're overreacting. But unfortunately, it's very, very easy to do something like this. When a new law is brought in and it is kind of vague, from what I've read here, I can see that they're actually targeting what I've said they would. But it's like this situation. Let's say you're in school. Someone does something behind the teacher's back. The teacher doesn't figure out what student actually did it. And therefore, the teacher says, OK, everyone's going to sit in class until we find this one person who did that when the bell rings. Everyone somewhat ends up getting caught and blamed for something that 
one person decided to do and like this is what I think is gonna happen in some very special cases. Will that special case happen to me? I hope not. Will it happen to anyone else? I also hope not equally but these are just some concerns that we have to start considering and this is stuff that now is worth being educated about whether you're a YouTuber, whether you're thinking about becoming a YouTuber in the future or whether you're just someone that watches content because you want to know this stuff if you start seeing less uploads from people you watch. That's my basis for this. This did turn into a very rambly video as they normally do but there's a lot of information to speak about. It's kind of interesting actually whenever I think about doing these videos I think to myself this is probably going to be a four minute video where I just talk about it real quick and we're done but I'm, I'm actually reaching the 30 minute mark with just talking and it's kind of crazy how I always manage to do this. That is going to be everything covered there and to be honest I think I covered most of the whole like taking a break thing. Uh, I'm just kind of hyped to get away from this sort of stuff man because my brain uh, when I read this information alongside having to make content it's just it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot for someone to take in like I'm just a dude literally sat in his bedroom making videos and now I'm having like potentially law enforcement placed against my name because I decided oh hey I'm gonna play three random games today. Bruh. We're gonna wrap this up for this video though guys. I hope you did get informed by this They always tend to turn into some rambly state, but there is information I feel like I was able to portray through this one So I'm still gonna use this as a video and I hope you guys do research into this if it's something you're interested in Oh, yeah, also I'm gonna say this <laughs> Yeah, this video is not for kids. Thank you for watching this video, guys, and just listening to me talking about my break and also talking about the YouTube issues. It's nice to actually sit down with just the camera on and just talk sometimes. Not always have something in front of you stimulating what you're about to say, but instead just me talking from my head. It actually does help a lot, and uh, I encourage other YouTubers to just talk about this issue as well or talk about anything they want, really, from time to time. It's something I really want to start doing more so. But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you did learn something new from this one, and I'll, of course, see you on the next one. Well, you're not going to cut clip. Like, you've edited through this. You've got to this point. If this is the end of the video. You haven't cut this? Bro, are you re- You still haven't cut clip. Fine, I'll take control. I'll turn the camera off.